I have a role with Cancer Research UK as their cancer prevention champion. Most of my own studies are trials or observational studies of smoking cessation interventions or population level interventions to reduce tobacco use. Um, I also do work on alcohol policy. So it's trying to look at studying often natural experiments where we have policy changes to see what happens in practice. Um, so that, those are the types of studies I still do. So when we talk about cancer prevention, often clinicians and others think about how they can um, intervene with individuals for primary prevention, which might be around addressing health behaviours, things like diet, physical activity, weight, alcohol or tobacco. And those are all important things to do, brief advice, treatment. But actually what we know from decades of evidence is that the biggest impact is when you change things at the population level. So you change policies or environments that make it easier for people to make healthy choices. Um, and that's what we discussed in today's symposium, population level interventions to reduce cancer. The research funding, for example, for prevention is tiny compared to the funding on treatment, optimization, uh, new drugs. Um, so that's a big challenge. The other thing is that I think um, we kind of accept in Western societies in particular that people make their own choices and therefore recommending things like policy change can be controversial. So I think one of the challenges with prevention is um, clinicians, professionals, others, they don't necessarily know uh, what to do and they think that um, it's not their role to be advocates for that type of change. They'd rather focus, for example, on the individual patient. Um, but certainly in my experience, if we want to reduce preventable cancers, we actually need more of us in the community to be advocates for that kind of change. And so I think co conveying the evidence about what works at the population level helps people to understand why that type of change is important. I think uh, charities and other NGOs are really important, uh, particularly if they're not reliant on government for funding. And what they can do is they can commission studies or they can look at the evidence, they can communicate clearly what they think works or doesn't based on, on, what we, on the evidence that we have. And then they're able to be a voice, not necessarily alone, but with other partners uh, to, to advocate for, for policy change. So they can push government, to make tricky decisions. And the other thing they can do, of course, is they can work with the public. So they can change public opinion by identifying what the public don't know or what they might want information about. Uh, just to give you one example, we found in two recent surveys we did that people who were more aware of the links between obesity and cancer and alcohol and cancer were more likely to be supportive of policy changes to reduce harmful alcohol consumption or to support people to maintain a healthy weight. And that's an important finding. And I think what it means is that we actually need to increase um, people's understanding of these preventable cancer risks uh, before we can make the case um, for, for some of the policy changes that we need. I mean, essentially, we talked about what I describe as the four Ps. Uh, so that's product, place, price and promotion. Um, and if, I think if we want to reduce alcohol consumption or we want uh, obesity rates to be lowered because they are so high, not, in the U not just in the UK but in many countries, then the things that we need to change are in, in our environment are things like uh, the price of products, things that are re reasonably cheap or very cheap, easily affordable and not necessarily the right things for people to consume. We need to address things like marketing, that's the promotion of these products, particularly to children because we know that really affects consumption are things like foods that are high salt and sugar and fat. For alcohol, for example, we might want to look at the place of sale or the times of sale. So that's the P in place. Um, and then also the product themselves. So we know that we can have reformulation of some foods to make them healthier, and that involves working with industry. Or for alcohol, for example, we could be trying to have price measures that would actually make the products that are lower alcohol more attractive to consumers. So those are the four Ps. Those are things we can change in the environment. Um, and I think communicating that clearly um, and giving people the evidence to understand why those types of changes are important alongside treatment or support for individuals is quite crucial.